welcome to the Mystery Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Trust in me. Oh, wait, wrong seats. Hello, boys. Hello, Carl. Yes, Carl. A fan of many uh, hypnosis fans. In- it's just the main interest. Uh, let's just... I see more artwork of Carl hypnotizing. Yeah, let's just say that I've been around the internet and pictures of Carl. Carl. Is disturbing. Yes. Very, very disturbing. So, anywho. You know, for kids. <laughs> so, anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to do My Little Pony Legends of Magic issue number 5. In this issue, Pinkie Pie reads to Sunburst about the legend of Sanambula and the giant snake. So, anyway, before we head in, Silver, first impressions. Well, this one is a tricky one. Sonambula doesn't have a lot of speaking lines in the show. And for a while, this was a more fleshing out of her character, but was also a very different character. The Sonambula in this comic is very different from her show's counterparts. And at first, because this story involves Pinky, I would attribute it to that. But with time, has made it a bit more dissonant. In terms of the story itself, there's not really a lot to to say in terms of story it's a very straightforward path down a snake's gullet yep yep <laughs> that is that is true <laughs> i mean sonambula is fun and a little bit silly and pinky adds her own flair to the story but mostly i get sort of hung up on this feels the most divergent of the uh, legends of magic comics like she's out there like it seems totally different from the show's canon right Yes, it is a very different somnambula. And from for this issue, I could say, well, Pinky's the narrator. That may have something to do with it. But later issues would prove that wrong. Mm-hmm. And in this scenario, it could be the un... What's the word I'm looking for? Unreliable narrator? Unreliable narrator. Uh, also, just maybe some communication weakness between the show staff and uh, the comic staff. It can happen. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, too, when you really think about it, this is similar to comic book Luna versus show Luna. Mm, it's true. The comic book Luna is more uh, old school, can't like voice still. What, comic book? Yeah. I thought comic book Luna, well, when Andy Price was doing it, uh, seems to be a lot more fun. Well, that too. Yeah. Often, often I do prefer, uh, I do prefer the comic versions if there's a dissonance, I prefer comic Sonambula to show Sonambula because show Sonambula doesn't get to do a whole lot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, you know what? It's it's nitpicking to something where we can't really control. So, eh. and as for me, this comic was a lot of fun reading it. Like, I highly enjoy the interaction between Sunburst and Pinkie Pie. And I also enjoy Sonambula's story and how it's set up. And the ending there was kind of okay. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But anyway, uh, if you guys have not read this issue yet, uh, pause here and go read it first. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy reading the comics. And well, let's start off the story with our, well, quote-unquote lead hero, Sunburst, walking through Cantalot Castle thinking about this book and he got no idea how to pronounce Sonambula. And yeah, um, you know, the nerd as he is, not paying attention to where he's walking, he stumbles across Pinky Pie's party cannon. And oh boy, um, this is going to be a surprise because, uh, because, well, it seems that it's Tiberius' birthday and... Princess Luna commissions Pinkie Pie to throw a party. Yay, much fun. And that party involves th- aiming a cannon at Sunburst's head. Zip the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as as frightening as that is, though, it's where Pinkie whispers you might want to duck. How she's doing that with her mouth, I both do and do not want to know. <laughs> Let's just say it's Pinkie. Pinkie says Pinkie. I think Pinkie might be more in a gelatinous state than a solid. <laughs> <laughs> pinky says Pinky. So anywho, um, I forgot to mention that Sunburst's book is stuck into the party cannon and Pinkie Pie, well, it's not said in the comic, but I'm just going to say 
Sunburst, go wide. Well, he went wide and he also went down. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it's a prep fall. Ha ha ha. Pinkie Pie, you are a psychotic loon. <laughs> That's true. But she's also a convenient point of exposition. And this is a watershed event. Hmm. I remember, actually, I don't fully remember, but the idea was when this came out, this issue came out, it was the first time that the comics were now catching up to the show. We just had uh, the Daring Do- Daring Done episode, mm-hmm. and this came out like the next Wednesday. <laughs> Unfortunately, that schedule was messed up because of all the early releases in Australia. So the intention was there to have this very tight run release. And unfortunately, the international uh, schedules kind of futz that up. The comic idea and the show idea, it was genius. I like it. It was kind of the perfect pairing to melt the two worlds together. Unfortunately, it didn't really pan out because, like you mentioned before, early release. But it's still a fun comic. Mm -hmm. True that, true that. But anywho... To Sunburst's surprise, Pinky knows about Sunembla, and Pinky ex- <laughs> Pinky summarized her adventure with Daring Do or a Link in the most Pinky Pie way ever. Indeed, and what while decorating for the party, that is mad skill. Yep, yep, and also um, a lot of um, plot holes in her story, <laughs> like a lot of skipping scenes here and there, like. There's more to the story than what you're telling me, isn't it? Well, I mean, uh, it is Pinky, and also you don't want to give away the whole story. You want people to go see the episode. Oh, true that, true that. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Sunburst says, "Okay, I want to. I'm going. I'm going to read this book." And Pinkie Pie says, "Wait, sorry, uh, read it to me. I want to listen and do the funny voices. The voices it really make the story experience much better." And it seems that Pinkie Pie has been hanging out with. Lit- Star Glitter a bit much because Star Glitter was so said that before. <laughs> You're calling her Star Glitter bit? Norman. Sorry, Glimmer. Your uh, branding is off. <laughs> Your branding is off. Everyone, shun him. Shun. Shun, shun, shun. It's one of those situations where sun- Sunset Shimmer and uh, Star Glimmer is sounds so alike that I get so confused. Oh, that's understandable. After a while, for a while, people thought... Uh, Starlight was just Sunset 2.0. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the only way to fix that is just to call Glim Glam and Shim Sham. <laughs> it's the Glibity Glam and the Shimity Sham. I yeah. like it. Yep. But yes, I, I appreciate Pinky is of the si- same mindset. It's like, Sunburst, you've just got to go with the flow and work on your voices. How else will you read to the fanfic children I've given you and Starlight? No. No. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, upon hearing... Uh, Sunburst says, I don't usually do the funny voices. Pinkie Pie yoinks the book and starts reading. And somehow, uh, Pinkie Pie's not alone. And by that, I mean her psychotic episode are there too. Like, um, Madame Lefleur, uh, Rocky, uh, Turnip Bucket, <laughs> and so on. And Maybe she's so delusional that we're all seen. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, her fantasy. I, I don't think so because Sunburst sees it and he's a bit worried about it. Well, he he knows he's being drawn to the maw of madness. <laughs> the horror! The horror! <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, we get to see Sonambula in action a bit more because in the episode, uh, for a recap for you guys, uh, we didn't really get to hear Sunambula's voice because it was narrated by an old man. In this book here, Sunambula is talking on her own accord. And yeah, <laughs> technically, it's still being narrated by yourself. So no matter how you think about it, you're voicing the character yourself. Do the funny voices. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we start off the Sunambula part of the story with her playing with some kids and suddenly the prince comes rushing in and asking for her help and advice because there's a snake in the palace. And I love her reaction. Just that little, eh? <laughs> Which is true because, uh, prince, 
I may be your advisor, but I think you can handle a snake. It's not that hard. Like, um, what kind of snake are we talking about? Is it... Does it have a rattle or is it a sidewinder and whatnot? And <laughs> the prince, being, well, kind of fed up, says, just follow me. And <laughs> there's a big giant snake. What? Well, sne- seeing is believing. And she's pretty <laughs> calm about it. Well, I think Sonambula just appreciates that this snake is on a different scale. <laughs> I see oh, the- what you did there. Oh, but I know that laugh. That's Norman. I'm secretly plotting to kill you laugh. <laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> It'll be ironic if it was a snake. <laughs> It'd be even funnier if it was a G.I. Joe Cobra. <laughs> But anywho, continuing on back to the story. Um, the prince says that the snake is no, the snake has eaten most of the guards, and the those three guards there are the only guards that we have left. And Sonambula's pretty calm about it. And she says that, well, honestly, what good does panicking do if we stay clear headed and Consider the situation, we're much more likely to come up with useful ideas. And yeah, sounds logical, but guards are dead. Guards have been eaten by the snake. Well, they've been swallowed, but this is a very polite snake. How many creatures dab their mouths with a napkin after they've had a meal? Not many, that's for sure. And yes, Sonambula sees the situation and and asks the prince for a pole, no matter how long it is. And a really long pull, actually. But yes. So, the prince here, like, he's given up. Like, he's given up. Why did I like this crazy loon? And yeah, just whatever, whatever. It's interesting. Somnambula is like this throughout the entire comic. She is unfazable. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I, She's got a level of detachment where she'll, she accepts that something is happening, but she doesn't let that frighten her it is a highly evolved uh viewpoint in fact when you can have that level of self-control that the that you don't give into a uh, world or group panic <laughs> yeah that, that is true that is just not normal well i also just love the i just so just love the prince's surrender sure whatever <laughs> go get her a pole yeah great now it's trying to eat my palace <laughs> yep so anywho uh, Sonambula flies off to the big giant snake and kind of tries to reason with it. Sonambula here is a really interesting character in the comic books because she tries to talk it out, like even with a big giant snake, which you don't really do. And being at a close distance, like that's scary. And well, um, she gets eaten for her troubles. Episode ends. Yay. And I don't know why Eyes in the Dark Somnambula says that was unexpected. It's She witnessed it happen several times. I know. Okay, the episode doesn't end there because uh, somehow Snake doesn't really chew her up. It's just in his mouth. And, well, Somnambula seems to have a plan. And this is one of those situations where this is nuts. This is just crazy. So, anywho, Somnambula drops a... Glowstone. What was it called again? Glow... Glopaz. A glow topaz. Yeah, Glopaz. Yeah, it's lighting up somehow. It's a rave stick. Woo! Having a rave in the gullet of a giant snake. That sounds surprisingly metal. <laughs> yeah! Uh, All you need is some strong bad. The system is down. The system is down. It's been a while. <laughs> it has, but it's still glorious. Oh, uh, no, what? Early 2000 internet? <laughs> yep. Oh, boys. But anywho, continuing on. Sunambula goes deeper in the snake and finds the guard. Oh, poor. One of the poor guard is crying because he knows he's almost. Well, he's going to die. But Sunambula is hopeful and gives one of the guards a glow pass and tells them to head up to the mouth. Uh, it's quote unquote safe, I think. And with that she goes deeper into the snake and appearing in quote unquote a village, somehow the snake ate. 
And the villagers say, who are you, glowing stranger? And she, well, talks to the villagers and they explain that uh, we were minding our own business, having breakfast, and suddenly this snake that's big as a barn came barging in and ate us all. At this point, Sunembla is just thinking like, hmm, the snake was not the size of a barn. That's pretty interesting. And she gives a glow pass to one of the villagers and says, head up to the mouth. And I'm going to see if I can go to the bottom of this problem. Well, if she goes too far to the bottom, it's it's going to get very, very unpleasant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So, so, so and she'll, be, she'll be like, oh, yeah, hey. oh, no. So anyway, to summarize, as Somnambula goes deeper into the snake, uh, she meets other residents or other people. Uh, some saying that the snake was big as a house and some says it was big as a bear and woodland creatures who don't really speak to her and surprisingly stuff. But she goes to the very end and she finds a wizard. Yay! And said wizard was the cause of the problem because he cursed a stone and the curse was meant to make the snake glow because said snake was eating all his magical supplies and being a pest and being a nuisance. So he decided to poison the snake, basically. I'm sure the SPCA will have words for oh, him, yeah. if they ever exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, somehow the wizard got eaten by the snake, and, well, uh, Sinembla being Sinembla, found the cursed item and says to the wizard, come on, let's head back to the top. We're gonna go fast! And tells the wizard to hold, uh, hold on to her tightly and she does go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster. 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 Yeah, faster. Yeah, yeah. But anywho, uh, Sinambula says, oh, everybody's, every pony's here. That's good. Let's open the mouth. And the guard says, we've been trying to do that. And it didn't really do anything. And Sinambula says, but you didn't have this. What's that? Help. And a wooden pole. Also, it's a wooden pole. It's an inanimate carpet rod. <laughs> that line there was a bit off. Do you think the writing's right or wrong? Well, hope can take many forms, including a wooden pole. Uh, okay, but but this is what I like. This is what I like about Sonambula. Everyone else is seeing a, a terrible situation, and I think their despair is understandable. Sonambula is kind of disconnected from reality. Mm-hmm. And in doing so, she's able to see ideas and opportunities others miss. She's a little bonkers, I think, but bonkers in a way that gives her a view that can enhance the world. True, true. And um, she, how to put this? She was she, she pre-planned this because knowing the situation, she brought a wooden pole. That speaks to her um, thinking. Well, yeah, she didn't know what she would find in the snake, but she knew that she would be within the snake's maw and need a way to pry it open. So she controlled the one thing she knows she can control, being forearmed, mm-hmm. even though she technically does not have arms. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, they force the mouth open, and one of the guards says, we can barely open it. We can get through. And Simonella says, yeah, true, but this little thing can, and tosses the cursed item, and the snake kind of pukes out the villagers, burp. And the snakes grow small, and the villagers celebrate Sonambula's uh, success. And the prince kind of learned his lesson to... Well, let me see what this is line. Uh, okay, and the prince was very excited to see his advisors still in one piece, not to mention his guards. He swore that next time, no matter how strange Sonambula's idea seems, he wouldn't lose faith in her, and he would never lose hope. Well, I gotta wonder one thing about the snake. Thankfully, none of the ponies were crushed, but there was an entire town in his belly. Ah, yes. But I'm just gonna say, off-screen, uh, the snake vomited a lot. I'm gonna say, no wonder it looks so distressed as it's leaving the palace. <laughs> yeah. It would have been kind of funny if Sinambula kept him as a pet. Or the prince. Why would she keep the prince as a pet? That's just weird. Norman, <laughs> you're crazy. You're crazy. There's some fan fictions that end up that way. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> uh, but anyway, when one story ends, the other starts. 
and uh, Pinkie Pie finishes the story and to Sunburst's surprise, he's just puzzled by Pinkie Pie's talent for doing the voices and is a bit freaked out. And he decides to, well, quote-unquote, start reading the next book, but a bit later after he's calmed down a bit. And the next book would be Mage Meadowbrook and the Abandoned City. Although I realized something. He's putting back what looks like the fourth book, which makes sense. The first one was A Recount of the Two Sisters. But look how many books are on the shelf for the, just the Legends of Magic. Mm-hmm. Either Star Swirl had many stories about the pillars, or there's even more legendary ponies on that shelf. Oh. Untapped potential! True, true. Or it's just some decoration to fill out the <laughs> uh, bookshelf. Uh, I confess I'm like that. I'll have some books that look really nifty, but I have not fully read them. <laughs> uh, I do that, but opposite. Instead of putting books on a bookshelf, I put figures. <laughs> well, and you haven't read them either. Yep, I just look at them. Because <laughs> there's nothing to read! <laughs> but anywho, episode ends. So let's head into discussions and final thoughts. Silver, what do you think of Sitbook? Well, it's a fun book. It's not my favorite of the Legends of Magic because you, the synambula you understand at the start is the same synambula at the end. Rockhoof went through a journey of rediscovery, of recommitting to his ideals. Uh, Mist Main's story was really more about Luna coming to a grips. Uh, Flash Magnus, he made a choice, and he wasn't sure what his future would entail. So Nambula, with her per- near-perfect optimism and uh, her unique view on the world, she's unfazed and unchanged throughout this story. And in a way, I find that actually lessens my investment. It's the prince who really learns the most. But uh, I can also see why Pinkie Pie would identify with Somnambula. They're both pretty unshakable, uh, although Pinkie, I think, has stumbled more times than Somnambula. Oh, true, but we haven't seen more of Somnambula to fully judge her uh, reactions and whatnot. Say true. I mean, we know she gave up on uh, Stygian. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even she didn't have the help, hope. Well, but still, it's one of those situations where we need to well catch up to the future. That'll be soon. And yeah. Oh, we're gonna go back to the future. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> yep. But anywho, uh, let's see. Uh, as for me, this book was a lot of fun, and it does how to put it. It's fun reading the story, but once you really sit down and think about Sunambula's personality quirks and whatnot, it's not the same as in the show. And granted, the show didn't really give her much time to well expand on it. Yeah, so right now, the, the comic book Sonambula actually has much more personality mm-hmm. uh, than the Sonambula of the show. Mm-hmm. But because they're so drastically different, it feels awkward. True. But I don't know. It's one of those situations where I feel that the... Like I mentioned before, it's the Princess Luna comic syndrome where uh, you, you enjoy this character's quirk because... Uh, it's different, it's fun, it's something exciting. And once you see it in the show, it's totally different. It's like calm and muted. We, we don't really see the quirky personality that was written in the comics. And I do feel that they try to tone that down now in the comics. You agree? Mm, trying to t- tone down the quirkiness? Yes. Honestly, I haven't seen a whole lot of Luna well, that's going to change. By the time this airs, the first issue of Nightmare Nights, with a K, mm. uh, will have a, will have hit store shelves. We'll get to see a lot of Luna then. I can't wait. That's going to be exciting. But what I mean... It has Luna. Luna, Luna. <laughs> yeah, but what I mean about that is, like, I think I'm used to the Andy Price Luna because of how funny, fun, insane she can be while the show Luna plays her serious, brooding... And whatever it is, you, you know what I mean? Although, more recently, I think the show's restored some of her vitality. Which episode was that? Was it the one... A Royal Problem. A Royal Problem. Ooh, is that? It's where Starlight sw- swaps their cutie marks. Oh, yes, that one. Oh, but still, it's one of those... Yeah, I don't know. It didn't seem 
much. Like, could have been done more, more quirkiness. But oh well, uh, that's the uh, story for this week. So, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I believe that it is time for a return to the show. We've been we've been running comparisons. We should continue onward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. In fact, if memory serves, last time we reviewed the Meltdown, which was just before the mid-season hiatus. Yep, yep. Which didn't last very long because then suddenly there were all these uh, early airings in other countries. Confound it. <laughs> yep, oh, that is going to be interesting. But now we have marks for effort. Yes. This. Where the Crus- Crusaders will get to check out the School of Friendship and we're introduced to the Spawn of Satan. Oh, uh, you mean Cozy Glow? Kratos! Dominus! <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think Cozy Glow is a really interesting character. She's so sweet. She's so kind. And, yeah, she's a lot of fun. Yes, fun. That's what she is. Yep. Just smile and nod and pray she doesn't have a knife <laughs> tucked under a wing. I'm just saying that she's not all that bad. She's She helps ponies a lot. Oh, well, that that's a debate for when she uh, hits the scene. But yes, we'll get to look forward to the, the demon child. That's not fair. <laughs> oh, I think it's very fair. In fact, I think I'm being rather generous. <laughs> Uh, knowing what we know, yeah, no, nah, spoilers, but anywho, that'll be next week's thing. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters, and the Twitter account, sorry, and the show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo and Silver. Where can the good people find you? You can find me on the YouTubes under Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt, where I post Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics before uh, new episodes. And as we talked about last time, there'll be a Goodnight comic just before the Christmas special, yes. which is in October. Oh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's on October 27th on a Saturday. Yes. Yes. Oh, wows. Wowsy wows. Wows indeed. And let's see, you can also find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday where I will post a review or an editorial. And you can find me here. Hello! Hey, yeah, Silver's here too. Woo! So anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyvlive.com. Also do subscribe to the MB Show Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and stitch your radio. Over there, you get to hear us talk and review stuff mobily because on the YouTubes you don't really have that mobility unless you're YouTube premium and yeah you need to pay money for that so why not subscribe to a free version of the show on iTunes or Stitcher Radio you'll get to jog and do sports stuff yay but anywho if you'd like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com with every support you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank yous i like to thank myself like amy charles of night tristan starstream lurker cat and also jeffrey thank you so much guys for being awesome anyway i have been known as Sanzo. i am the silver queen and we'll catch you next week with another fun episode of the mbs show see ya cobra I Joe. Yes, my voice, my sound box has been having trouble lately. I think it's time to swap out the old batteries. Yep, it, it sounds like it. It sounds like it.